Hello friends and welcome again. In this video, I will share with you the best gift or present that you can give to your family. Now, what I will talk about in this video is what is that best gift or present? Why is it the best gift and present and how you can go about purchasing it? Now, let me reveal that best present or that best gift. It is life insurance. Yes, you heard it right. It is not a car. It is not a puppy, a dog or a video game for your kids. It is life insurance. Imagine a world or a scenario where you are no more there for your family. You're not the person who's earning because you pass away. What happens to your family? How do they meet the ends and how do they pay the bills and the mortgage and everything? we think or we take life for granted we wake up every day and we are like i'm healthy and i will just go along with the day today and i'll sleep and tomorrow i will wake up again but life is very fragile you don't know what is coming next and it could be that next day you wake up and you find that you are god forbid no more there and now your family is without you so not just that they have a lo loss of a parent but they also have a loss of an income. So the least you can do for them is that in case you as an individual are not there for them, at least there is some source of income that can keep them going in terms of not to stress about money. That should be the least of their stress when and if they lose you, God forbid. So you need to leave them in a situation or in a place where they don't feel stressed about money. And hence, the most important gift that you can give them is life insurance. They may not realize it the day you're giving them or the day you're purchasing the life insurance. However, when it is put to use, again, God forbid, if it is put to use, they would be thanking you for making this decision. Now, this decision becomes more and more important as you grow in age and as you have more liabilities, you have more commitments, and um, you have a bigger family like when you don't have kids maybe it's not as compulsory or as necessary but as you have kids it becomes more necessary because now you have kids their education their expenses they're growing up and all all of that is involved so you need to consider all of that you just can't consider everything on day-to-day -day basis you have to think about life long term and hence long-term thinking life requires you to think about life insurance. Now, one call out before we move forward. In case you find any value from this video, I have two ask for you. One, press the like button as this keeps you motivated. Second, press the subscribe button along with the bell icon so you get notified as soon as I put a new content on this channel. On this channel, I post content pertaining to financial and career success for early and mid-career professionals. Also, in case you want me to continue making unbiased content like this, you can support me on patreon.com. I will leave the link to my Patreon page in the description of this video. Now, let's get rolling back into the video. Now, let me also quickly talk about what are the different types of life insurances and how you can go about purchasing them. Now, there are typically two buckets of life insurances. One is term life insurance, where you pay a premium for a certain number of years in which you are insured. And during that period, if something happens to you, then the policy is activated. This is called term life insurance and usually this is very cheap to purchase the premiums are very cheap and the earlier you purchase the policy the cheaper the premiums would be which means if you are young like if you purchase the policy at in your 30s then the premiums would be lower versus when you purchase the policy in your 40s and 50s because the chances of you passing away are more when you are higher up in the age bracket now the other set of policies are usually the whole life policy the variable life policy or universal life policy I would strongly recommend to stay away from any of these sort of policies where there is an investment element to it, whereby when you are contributing, you're also generating or investing that money, which is also generating some in, in dividends and all. Big picture, the reason I recommend you to stay away from it is one, you should never mix two things together. Investment should be investments and insurance should be insurance. When you mix them up together, there is always or usually there is something gray there, which kind of the agent who's selling you is making that money. When they put too many things together and try to bundle it, that means they are making more money. If they're making more money, it is coming out of your pocket. And that's one of the reasons the premiums would be very high. The cost of that policy is very high. Now, there is a chance of making some money through the returns, but the cost is so high that it eats up in the returns. So don't go for that policy. Just keep your life simple and go for the term life policy. 
Now, the best way to go about searching and buying this insurance policy is maybe to start with your insurance agent who sold you your car policy. Probably you have a good relationship with them. And when you were looking for a car policy, you were also shopping across the market and you found this agent who was able to sell you the car insurance policy or your house insurance policy. Maybe they can bundle up a life insurance along with the insurance they have already sold you and give you a good discount. But again, make sure you go for a term policy and not any of the policies which include investment element in it. Now let's talk about how much should be the value of the policy. What I mean by the value of the policy is that, God forbid, in case your family has to activate the policy, how much money will they get? Here you have to consider three elements. One, your liabilities. And this primarily includes debt. So if you have a mortgage, you should include mortgage in it. Let's say if you have a mortgage of around $300,000, you should certainly include in your calculation $300,000 because what you don't want is if in case you are not there anymore, your family does not own the house and they are stuck with paying mortgage payments to the bank, which they can't afford. And now they have to let go of the house or something or the other. When if ever, God forbid, you're not there for your family anymore, they should be owning the house completely. So whatever policy you buy, the, the size of the policy or the quantity of the policy or the value of the policy should cover for the debt of the house or the mortgage. Second, if there is any other debt, like if you have credit card debts, which you shouldn't have idly, but if there are any other debts you have, maybe car loan or car financing or car leasing, whatever it is, make sure they own the car, they own the house, the value of the policy should be enough to own the house and to own the car. If God forbid you are not there, this is least, this should be least of their worries. Number two is annual expenses. For instance, when you are there, you are an earning member in the house and you are bringing in money, which is also paying the bills and also paying for groceries and other items. Now, certainly when you are not there, your income is also not there. So they will be, or your family would be left without that big income. And maybe you are the sole earner. Imagine if you are the big earner, what you need to do is you need to make sure that they are covered for next three to five years. I would keep it five years. So they don't have to worry about income not coming in for next five years till they figure out whether they have to downsize from the house, whether they have to go for additional income, find more jobs and all give them a relief of five years. Now, three to five years, generally I say, five years is when, for instance, if you already have some savings in the bank. So if let's say you have savings worth of three years already in the bank, then maybe you just need to cover them for two years, which means your debt is clear, mortgage is clear, car payments are clear, all other debts are clear, and then they are covered for next five years, either through the savings that you have in your bank or in your stocks or in your investments or through the insurance policy. So if the bank and the cash value and the stock investments already cover for the five years, then maybe you don't need to include this amount in your cash value of the policy. Third element is kids education, which is a big expense. So make sure you also cover in the policy that you purchase any expense that you expect to pay for the kids because now when you are two individuals two parents earning for your kids it is very easy to save for college education but if it's just one individual it would be very hard you don't want your kids to be in that trauma of losing you and then also being in the trauma of just figuring out how they would go about college or how would they go about paying for their education in future so make sure these three elements are covered add all of them together, this should be the size of your policy or the value of your policy. Now, next question is what should be the time limit of the policy? Because the term life insurance policy allows you maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. Here, it is best to match it up to your retirement date. If you've decided that you want to retire at the age of 60, which means by the time you reach 60, you will have enough money to not work anymore, which means the money that you will have will pay for your life expenses, for your family, for education, would have paid all the mortgage off, cars paid off and everything, which means you have that money, which in case you are not there anymore, your family can make use of that money to be debt free, to have cars uh, be owned by them for education, for everything. So think or plan your retirement date and probably I'll make a separate video on how you should go about planning your retirement date. But once you've planned your retirement date and you say, let's say it's age 60 and you are currently age, let's say 40, then you only buy policy for 20 years and not more than that. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this video was valuable for you to have now some idea with regards to 
why life insurance is important rather it is the most important gift or present that you can give to your family and how you should go about purchasing it or determining the value of it and for how long should you purchase the policy for in case you found this video valuable i'm sure you'll find another video very valuable on my channel where i talk about what are the best stock investments in the stock market you can check it out here other than that there's another video where i talk about my financial freedom journey you can check out that video here thank you